Today on the show, we're in South Africa. Yes, South Africa, where chicken is a vegetable. Today, I'm gonna to show you a full day at Klein Pop Kale with hunting, cooking, and stuka. Sorry, buddy. Welcome to South Africa. This is a little bit of a departure from the normal Sporting Chef show. I'm Scott Lasaf, and at some point I'll do a little cooking, but really, it's not about me. It's about what happens here in South Africa. This is my first time here, and uh, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. What I've found out is that whether you hunt or whether you just want to hang out in some of the coolest places on the planet, you know, really. I can't find a better place than right here at Klein Pop Kale in South Africa. Now, on the show today, um, there's going to be a little cooking and there's going to be a little bit of hunting. And I want to give you just a taste, just a tease of what you can do here. Um, if you're a non-hunter, don't worry, there's plenty to do. Like, how about this? We're going to have a little lunch in the field that they've brought out here. Uh, I'm going to cook some uh, gimsbuck. We'll, we'll see what animals they have brought for me. I've got the Camp Chef stove fired up, and uh, in short order, we're going to show you what it's like here, roughing it in South Africa. Meanwhile, I want you to check out Brooks Hansen. You've seen Brooks on the show. He's normally on the smart end of the camera. He went hunting today, and he's looking for gimsbuck and kudu. Let's see if he gets what he went out to do. Okay, Brooks, uh, we have a water hole here. That's the most active water hole we have. Um, Gemsbach, Kudu, Eland, Blesbach is very really active at this time of the day and uh, I think we're going for Kudu or Gemsbach now so let's hopefully we'll see uh, Kudu or Gemsbach there I know we'll probably get a, get a Gemsbach in it area because they like it a lot Alright, I know Gemsbach was like on my bucket list Yeah Gemsbach or Kudu, I really, I really wanted to come to Africa for one of those so mm -hmm. well, let's see if we can find one Let's go ahead That's a beautiful animal. Nice shot. Nice long horns on it. Do you want me to shoot right there? I can't no. see your shoulder. No, no, no. The gap, I think the gap is a small. I just want to see the head and make sure it's a nice baby before we shoot it. I mean, if he's a nice boy, I can shoot in that gap. Okay, there's a lot about bulls, just bug it off now. And the kudu just came out a little bit, just give it a few minutes. Okay, I can see like his shoulder, I got a good shot right no, now. No, 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 wait, wait for him to come out, wait for him to come out. Just give it, give it time. But there he is, there he is, he's coming out okay. now. Okay, okay, is he good on? Yeah, yeah, take him. Yeah! <laughs> good shot! <laughs> oh man, that's a great bull. That was a good hit, I saw him carrying his shoulder. Yeah, yeah he's going down. He's going down, and he's down. Yeah. <laughs> Good shot, man. Oh, man, that's a great boy. That's a great boy. I think he's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is awesome, man. Oh, man. Look, Look at, at this guy. So, Tinas, this is what I came to Africa for. You fly all the way to Africa, kudu. Yeah. You told me it's called the Grey Ghost of Africa. Why? Because if you, if you spot him, and he just runs off a few yards, you won't see him again. They just disappear and they blend in so well, you have a hard time seeing them. Well, I, w I was kind of second guessing that. I thought, oh, we're going to get a kudu. But we've spent almost three days and I have yet to have an opportunity one and finally one presented today. And yep. I was just being patient. I'm excited to try kudu. Now, Scott tells me he thinks he knows how to cook kudu, but you're better half Michelle <laughs> back at the back at the house, uh -huh. she knows how to cook kudu and hopefully she can show him a thing or two on how to cook this bad boy. Hardebeest loin. 
Julius, where are you? I'm here. Come over here. How do you say come over here in Afrikaans? Komir. <laughs> Sounds about the same. Yeah. Tell me about the hartebeest loin. Well, you know, in the shot placement book, they say hartebeest is not for human consumption. It's for bait and camp rations. So maybe you can prove them. Not wrong edible? Today. I love it. Maybe you can prove them wrong today. High mountain burger seasoning to the rescue. Now, it's been marinated with some Worcestershire and olive oil. Right. This is the high mountain. You like bacon? Yeah. Do you like smoky flavors, yeah, yeah. bacon very, flavors? Very, very, very it's been marinated. It's been a, I'm going to season it on the outside with this. And as I understand it, you want to make sure that we cook it well done, right? Yeah, it must be well done. Well done, like yeah. a briquette. Yeah, then we can throw each other with it. <laughs> Must really be rare. rare, rare, rare. So, everybody dished up. I see potato salad. I see the corn and the chickpea and the bread, the homemade bread. I love that. I brought a little meat. So, help yourself and pass it down. So, while everyone here dishes up the heart of East and the stuffed Gims Buck Loin seasoned expertly with High Mountain seasoning. Stick around, there's so much more to see. We're just getting started at Claim Pop Kale here in South Africa. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. Uh, this is Stuka, the um, Basset Hound. And I'm talking with Julius Gares, who is the, what do you do here? You got something? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I think I'm more the, <laughs> Jack of all trades, master of none on the property. So I want to know about what go, all the cool things that go on here. You know, what people can expect when they come from the U.S. or anywhere in the world to be here. This is the absolute most incredible place I've been, and I've been to some pretty cool places. You know, Julius, I noticed kind of right here in the background, um, as the sun sets with the rhinos and the, and the roan antelope and the other animals in the background and I see your guys this is we're we're fall now so you're putting out feed for these I think these are your pets right here I don't think this is we're not hunting these animals these are your pets aren't they yeah. no we don't hunt them at all um, we have a huge problem with rhino poaching in South Africa mm -hmm. and that's our security system to feed them every afternoon so we can see them right and they come to the lodge um, normally about around about five o'clock so if so somebody wants to come and poach them they have to come right to the lodge and say hello before they can poach and them. they got to get past yeah, you and everyone great. else too yeah. that's great I want you to check out what the hunting is like here um, at Klein Pop Kale because it's like no other place on the planet well Jeff as it looks like everybody settled on the vehicle, um, you just, just didn't need to tell me what are you looking for today. Today I'd like to go out and get a really nice water buck. I know there's a lot of water buck here on the property. I've seen them every time I've hunted here, but I've never, I've never gotten one. So that's one trophy that I've never had. That's why I wanted to move it up to this way. They are about 300 yards out. You see the, <coughs> the green tree all the way at the back? You remember where we saw the water buck? Right. They, the water hole is here. They normally go and come and drink early morning, mm -hmm. and then they go upwind all the time. Let's go. We have them. There's a nice water hole here. Let's go and check if we can see something. There. Let's go get okay. it. Okay, Jeff. I just saw a nice water buck ball. I saw. I just got a glance of him walking to the left. Okay. We had the water hole here now, so I think we must just go closer and take a nice look at him. All right. So Jeff, how did you feel about that shot? 
I had a, it was kind of a long shot and I had to shoot in between trees, but I had a good shot at his shoulder mm -hmm. and uh, had to move the sticks around a little bit to get on him. Uh, but I felt pretty confident because there was nothing in there. Uh, and, you know, I saw him kick yeah. uh, when it hit him. So, so you heard him out this way. Yeah, he, I heard him down this way and then I hit the trees crushy. So I think he's down. Look at that. There he is, down. Thank you, <laughs> Tinas. Thank you. Oh, man. Yeah. Yes. He's down. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very nice bull. Oh, look at him. He's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> yes. When you come to gears, listen to your pH. Yeah. Because they're going to tell you that's a good one, that's a shooter, or it's not. And I think that's a big difference because of the quality of the animals yeah. that, that we always get here. It's, it's, it's never just shoot an animal. It's go for the quality, go for the big one. You know, getting to South Africa was easy. We were here in about an hour and a half from Sacramento. Is that, does that seem accurate? Not at all. <laughs> so you've been to the U.S. and you know it takes a little while to get yeah. here. Yeah. What I found on my plane anyway um, is that we got free drinks, they fed us all the time, we watched movies, you take a few naps and the next thing you know you're in Johannesburg. That's great. When is the prime time to come here and hunt? Well from our fall to the late winter is definitely the prime time to come. Then the animals are more in the open, they graze more. You, you know, you, in, in the summertime, it's very, it's very hot and, you, and it could be humid. Um, so definitely the fall into winter. But this is one of the places that you can hunt year round, right? That's correct, yeah. Um, and especially for people in the U.S. that, you know, you get that depression when you're not able to hunt anything. Hunting season's over. Why not come here? Um, and I've found that what you're going to pay to hunt here is comparable to what you'd pay for a quality elk hunt in Colorado or, or Wyoming. And I'm also not saying that you shouldn't do that too. Yeah. This is just another alternative because as much as I loved a Colorado elk hunt, you know, I love this just as much. Yeah. You will get the opportunity to shoot at a number of different animals. Tell me about some of the animals that you have here on the property. Yeah. Well, we can start from the biggest and go down. We have um, Cape Buffalo. It's, um, I think it's the most challenging hunt that you can almost try, except if you want to go for elephant, and um, which I, I haven't done. Right. The, the second big animal we have is, is um, and I'm very passionate about all of them, is the, is the um, sable and roan antelope. And then we have all the plains game, you know. We have uh, 29 species on the property that we hunt now, and in the near future we'll add another five or six species. Anybody that complains about it, anybody that doesn't come here and eat the game is missing a big opportunity. And you, oh, you're the grill master here, aren't you? Well, uh, I try. And, t and tell me, what do you call the grill, the, the barbecue, the grill that you use? We call it the braai. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a camphor wood that we have uh, naturally in the area. It gives a nice uh, flavor to the meat. It definitely a little smoky flavor to the meat. Right. And we we actually you know all the all the different animals we have is edible and they are really really very good and are you going to be grilling for for tonight for tonight definitely maybe? when he's not grilling loins julius could use a weston grinder to turn tough cuts into burger and sausages next up my son jake and i spend a full day in the field and you'll get to meet two of my favorite south africans coco and smitty Plain pup kale, they do like to mix up not only the menu, but the dining area. This morning we had eggs benedict for breakfast. Tonight it's something special, dining outdoors, where the temperature is perfect. Next up is Jake's first hunt. And at the very least, it was interesting. Dennis, what are we, uh, what are you gonna try and put me and Jake on today? Well, um, if we can get a nice bless buck. Good. That's not too difficult animal to get close to. And uh, Are you saying I'm, I'm old and I can't hunt that? No, hard? no, 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 no. I mean, it's okay. I've heard worse. <laughs> but see, I, we got, I got this spring buck with me over here, too. Uh -huh. We're going we're gonna to have to find something for him, too, right? Well, uh, um, they, we have a lot of animals there. There's Gemsbach, Horribeast, Blue Wildebeest. I mean, 
If we see something and I tell you it's a good one, you can decide if you want to take it or not. Because that's the wind change level is coming more from that side, so I think we go down and work our way up in a straight line towards the, where they are. What is it? <coughs> Jim's buck. And Jake's gonna shoot it. Or shoot at it. Yeah. So, yeah. so we all stay in one line. Right. Jake behind me, okay. and then you, and then let's go. Um, Brooks. Brooks is in here. Brooks doesn't exist. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I called the truck to bring the dogs. Uh, the, the blood is getting a little less and less all the time. I don't want to push it. Um, I think the dogs will give us a better chance to get it. If they get up to it, they will fight it and we'll have a chance to shoot it. So the dogs just ran off now, I think we better go. Yes. Okay. Reload, 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 reload. Okay, Jake, we're a little tired now. Um, the dogs got out of it, started barking. You had a nice second shot on him. He took him, it ran off again. I can still hear the dogs barking, but the shot placement on that second shot was very good. I think it's need to be done by now. You think you guys are tired? I can't keep up with you. Go that way. <laughs> I hear him. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. That's nice a beautiful buddy. animal. Scott. Yeah, man. It was nice having you with us. This Hi, is a good job, Smitty and Coco. Yeah. So this is how a father and son hunt pays off. Yeah. <laughs> nice big horns on it. Oh, that's a dandy. Now it's my turn. I'm not sure if we used up most of the daylight today, but <laughs> I'm still going to try and get that blessed buck. I see one nice buck in there with that blessed buck. Um, I think we just go down with the circle, wait around, come back. We have a couple of chemist buck also in here. We don't want them to spook us. Okay. We've got a pile of males here, and we're the blessed part. There's a red by the drink. This buck is just behind the bush on the right. I, uh, some of them are laying down, some are just standing around feeding. Uh, there's something running down there. Yeah. It looks like a uh, chemist buck or something. Uh, oh, that's good. Great shot. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> that was worth the wait. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, man. Give it to me. You can't be the only lace that shoots up here, right? <laughs> well, uh, let's go and have a look. Good. Yeah? Doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Nope. That's good. That's a beautiful animal. I scared him to death. Scott, Thank you. congratulations on your blaze buck. Yes, sir. It's a very nice <laughs> blaze buck. What I'm looking at here is I got lucky by about that much, right? About two or three inches. Two or three inches, and um, then we wouldn't be looking at a dead animal, would yep, we? Yep, yep. Or a wounded animal. <laughs> we wouldn't be looking at an animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, um, I'll take luck anytime. If you can't be good, it's good to be lucky. And thank you for making it happen, man. You're welcome, and congratulations again. Thank you, it's thank you, nice thank you. Enough. Let's do what we gotta do. You know, it's just the LACEF team. We do this not very often. We don't go to South Africa, do we? First for me. We coming back? Oh, yeah. Excellent. I want you to bring some of your own money this time. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> you know, I brought along the work sharp sharpener so I could sharpen up the knives for all the guides and skinners. A good quality, super sharp knife makes the work so much easier. Next up, a little music from Zimbabwe. So of course you see what a full day is like here at Klein Pop Kale. There's hunting, there's cooking, and there's music. We'll see you next week on The Sporting Chef.